Chasing the Mind, podcast number 15. And now for something completely random with the guys from the Something Random podcast. Welcome to Chasing the Mind, hosted by Dr. Angela Johnson and Dr. Stephanie Schwartz, the podcast that explores the art and science of the mind. Each episode, we will feature a topic or guest who offers a unique perspective in answering the following questions. How do our thoughts influence our sense of who we are? How do we impact the world around us? And can changing our minds change everything? Today on Chasing the Mind, Dr. Angela and Dr. Stephanie interview Charles, Scotty, Joel, and Michael from the Something Random podcast. Thank you for listening to Chasing the Mind. We have a very special set of guests, actually. Um, we have the guys from the Something Random podcast. Say hi, guys. Well, hello. hello. Hi. All right. So first, <laughs> you're all going to have to introduce yourselves because we're going to have to figure out who all you are. You know. Oh, you okay. So so we need to figure out how, how, how we're going to do this. Are we going to play a game of Rochambeau to figure out who's going first? <laughs> Uh, or you could Scotty, stand start. up. I'll I'll kick you. <laughs> if you fall down, I go first. No, uh, uh, my name is Charles Joseph Kelly. I am the 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 host of this show, and I am Michael C. Macbeth. I am the uh, co-host here. I'm Scotty Schaefer. I'm the co-co-host. My name is Joel Adam Chavis, and I am also <laughs> you know one of the co-hosts of the show. <laughs> So are you the co 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 host or? Uh, we don't we don't like labels. Yeah, like this that. is this is a label free zone, guys. Come on, oh, I should have clarified. So we're gonna label the hell out of you. Oh, <laughs> no. um, I can't wait. We've already developed a psychological test yes, for you, specifically I'm for so you. Excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited and nervous. Also, kind of nervous. Yep, that's that's where I'm at. Very much. So because this is a psychology podcast, the first question that I think everyone really wants to know is. Is all comedy rooted in pain, deep psychic pain? Hmm. No, I would say absolutely not myself. Yeah, I don't. I think a lot of my comedy uh, does stem from pain. It, it can, but there's there's times where um, happiness can can lead to comedy as well. Just just as much as pain could ever. Yeah, so I, mm-hmm. I, I think that's a no for me. I don't know, Scotty. I, I would say not always is how I would yeah. say it. Yeah, I mean, sure, it definitely comes into play where you're sometimes masking something, um, but but not all the time. I think definitely it's not. I think it's easier to find comedy in pain um, because it's a it's a it's a, a a interesting way to deal with pain. Um, but I don't think I don't think comedy necessarily has to be negative. No, or not come for from me. The negative. Not for me. Yeah, the, I, it's I. You know, from time to time, of course, you know, what. but uh, for me, I just I just really, really like to make people laugh. Yeah. So yeah. that's my uh, my thing. All right. Well, in that vein, is it true? I've heard that a couple of you have a wedding consulting business. Is that true? Mm, oh, that's that's yes. Michael and myself. Yes, yes indeed. OK, so they in the vein homework. of comedy and pain, tell us a wedding from hell story. <laughs> oh no um, oh, well actually mine is not one that i filmed but one that i happened to perform at <laughs> okay um so it was um it was a uh i believe a muslim family and the the wedding was in wyoming um and they hired um the midtown art center dinner detective cast to <laughs> perform at the reception. Oh, wow. And it was a murder mystery, a murder mystery dinner detective at the wedding, at reception. A wedding reception. <laughs> um, it was, it was a horrendous experience. Um, I was one of the detectives and what was your detective name? Uh, oh, my, my detective name for dinner detective is BJ Cummings. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> at a Muslim wedding. Yep. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> um, but half of like I think I think it was the bride's family was not there. Like there was there were three people or so there for the bride, and a hmm. very small number of people there for the groom. And it was also there was some sort of boxing match going on that night. It was 
it was like the Super Bowl of boxing. That's all I know. <laughs> I don't even know who it was that was fighting. Um, but a, an entire table of guys left to watch the fight. Oh, wow. Um, and it was a small s- wedding to start with, it sounds yeah. like. Right, right. And so then we're left with like a few women and um, a couple of children who were like doing cartwheels on the dance floor <laughs> while, we're, while we're trying to improv this murder mystery thing. And it's like, oh, I wonder if this guy over here is part of the show being the only guy who's still here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was disastrous. And we're like, okay, we're going to go get a drink now and try to make this evening better. <laughs> wow. And I don't so, imagine they served a lot of alcohol at the Muslim wedding, right? No, they sure did not. Oh. Um, and and yeah. we were performing, so we couldn't drink anyways. So <laughs> so no bacon martinis for you. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> we can't have pork either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> that wedding story actually just sort of writes itself. I right, mean, absolutely. You, you just like you you have the low number up. of people, the no alcohol, the Wyoming it just yeah and who gets a murder mm. mystery group to come and hey kill off uncle bob during the <laughs> during the reception yeah, if, awesome if there were if there were actual like family members and friends involved in the show that would have made it a lot more fun oh that's true so they just sort of sat passively while you ran around going a clue a clue uh uh-huh. <laughs> yes <laughs> yep Oh, dear. Well, tell us a little <laughs> bit about you guys in terms of your relationships. Like, how do you all know each other? And how, how do you all end up doing this together? Oh, we've known each other for, I would say, it's getting closer to a decade at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael uh, and myself have known each other for the better part of 13 years at yeah. this point. Um, we They're 14 now. Yeah, we're 14 years <laughs> old now. Uh <laughs> Uh, Emotionally. <laughs> so uh, Michael and I went to, to high school together, but I know uh, Joel and Scotty from the theater, mm-hmm. um, and we've done shows together. Uh, we've worked in theaters. We've supported each other, and then we've decided to uh, do the show together. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's, pretty, much, that's pretty much where we know each other. Is just theater. Pretty much the theater. <laughs> the- yeah, yeah, the- I, the- I, met, I met Joel and Scotty in the same show, actually. Uh, Wedding Singer? Uh, no, no, bye, no, bye, no. Birdie. Oh. bye, 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 Birdie. Bye, bye, Birdie. Yes, yeah. So, I met I met Scotty during Wedding Singer. I met Joel. Yes, before that. before that, but not long before. Yeah. So, and I don't know where we met. I don't Something know. in, in Greeley, I can't remember. Oh, what. I remember you. You were a swing uh, for Joseph at the very first show at the. Yes, at the, that's right. You were in theater. that show. I forgot. Yes. So that gosh, what fifteen oh. years ago? Oh gosh, it may have even been longer than that. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Yeah. And, so and we, this is all in Denver, down. right? Uh, uh, it's about an hour north of Denver. Yeah, yeah. So what is it with this particular part of the country that it seems to be this enclave of podcasting <laughs> community <laughs> oasis things? Because I, I, I know so many people who are in Denver around that area who are doing this. It's the weed. Yeah, it's ah. the weed. Every, see, Michael is 100% white. Uh, white, yes, white too. Um, he's right. Uh, but it's, it's definitely the marijuana. We, we're all high right now. No. That's not true. <laughs> None of us even smoke weed. That's what's <laughs> That's funny. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but I think you, could, you might as well say it's the freeze things up, right? Like if everyone <laughs> around you is smoking weed, then you could just be as weird as you want. Exactly. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, it, exactly. I, I blame audience, I blame my target yeah, audience. <laughs> yeah, I blame my weirdness on people smoking weed. It's all everybody else smoking <laughs> weed. It's not that I'm just a weirdo. And you go, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> So yeah. tell us, uh, you had somewhat of a transition between your first uh, episode and then your sort of reboot. Yes. What yes. was that about? So, well, I did do your homework. Oh, yes. So <laughs> our our show originally started as kind of a movie review show. Um, and not only are there so many podcasts that deal with movie reviews and talking about stuff critically. And that's just, I just found myself when I was recording those shows, uh, saying the same thing over and over again, that I like things that I, I like movies and I, I like specific things. So we, uh, <laughs> we stopped doing that show, uh, for, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, we were getting burnt out from, from the process. Uh, we were also getting into other projects that we couldn't spend time on the podcast. Um, and I just wasn't happy with, critiquing every single last thing you know um so we decided to do this podcast and it's been a lot less negative it's been we 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 talk about this every single week uh, and you can hear it 
we want to be positive about what we're doing. Mm. Uh, so when we talk about these bad movies that we watch, we'll talk about the things that we like about them. And we want to be positive because all these, all these movies, all these creations, they're still art and people are putting their time and their energy. And there's always going to be something good about them uh, that you can always find something period. Uh, even if it's the worst film on, on the planet, like look at the room. The room is, is considered one of the worst movies on the planet. People love that movie because it's so hilarious. The room, not room. Yeah. The room, not room. Oh, I was like going that, but I didn't see the movie. I read the book. It wasn't hilarious. Yeah. No, <laughs> not hilarious at all. No, yes, that's no. what I was like. You always mention that. I'm like, I'm I got to point this out. Yep. The, it's an important, it's the. the room. Yes. Well, that brings up the question. When I listen to you guys from week to week, where do you all find the time to watch all the stuff that you watch? I mean, it's like, what have you been watching this week? Well, I watched the entire six seasons of The Sopranos this week. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I have not gotten around to The Sopranos, but I, yeah. that's a fair question. We have no lives. Our entire <laughs> lives revolve around this podcast. Yeah. And um, so we all we do... We turn the mics off and we go turn on the television. So it's, that's it's, all we do. It, Sometimes we don't even turn the mics off. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're joking, but honestly, that's that's pretty much. I I work from home, and you know I run a, a video production and photography business. So a lot of the times when I'm editing photos, I'll throw on an episode or two or seven or twenty of television. My work is kind of spread out because I paint for theater. I do sets. I paint sets, and so I'll work really hard for three or four weeks straight. And then I'll have three or four weeks off, so I have time in between to. Yeah, I was going to gonna say tube. painting sets from home seems like a tough gig. Yeah, no, I, like you have do to it. transport them. <laughs> no, I don't do it from home. I have to go. I got to yeah. go and. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how big the set is, really. Yeah. In particular, I try and find a, a, like a series episode or something that's that's short enough where we can actually watch it like in. I don't know, five hours. So over the course of three days, I can knock it out. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like that's that's kind of where I'm at too. Um, I I've been I I used to watch an, an obnoxious amount of television. Uh, there's been weeks where I have. <laughs> I, I think there was a time where I was unemployed where I watched the entire series of Buffy in nine days. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, I watched the entire series of Buffy in nine days, and I've moved to that, and I've cut down on shows that I'm watching. So I'm only watching like three or four like major shows at a time, but I'll, I try to binge them all at once. So I don't have to spend any more time. Doing that's it. actually yeah, yeah. really impressive. Like that's like a season a day. Yeah. I, I don't want to talk those about those days. <laughs> in those days it was a real season. So it was like 22, yeah. 23 episodes. Yeah. Full. Yeah. I mean, but if you think about it, it's not 23 hours. It's more like right. 16 hours, but it's because it's no still, commercials. It's a lot of, yeah. yeah. That's a lot of, a lot mm-hmm. of television. I, lo- I love that you said that it's a real season because the seasons now that are like these nine to 12 se- episode seasons, those aren't real seasons. Yeah, huh? I disagree. <laughs> I rather have a 13 episode season than a bunch of filler. But that's besides the point. We could talk about that on our podcast. <laughs> we should because I have a strong <laughs> feeling about this. This is excellent. <laughs> So tell us about some of the projects that you've done. So one of the things we do on our show is diagnose a movie, and you guys just put out a short film. Yes. All yeah. three of uh, – 75% of us worked on a uh, short film called Tick. I watched it. You watched it. So you, you did spend time on it. So 100% of the people on this table <laughs> spent time with this podcast or on this uh, short film uh, called Tick. Uh, it was a short film that I uh, wrote and directed. Uh, Michael did the sound design and uh, Scotty acted in and mm-hmm. Joel watched. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was actually um, expecting it to be some sort of fandom homage to The Tick. And I'll just say I was extremely surprised. (laughs) I'm watching it and I'm like, when is somebody going to turn into The Tick? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Where's Patrick Warburton? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, Have you guys guys watched the the new new Tick? Yes. I haven't seen it, but it's on my list. Yeah. I've not gotten to the new one. No, it's, I haven't gotten to see it either. It's apparently really good. It's my my husband's yeah. seen it. He says it's great. But, you know, I'm mm. still, like, back. At, I just finished Daredevil, like, the first season. So I'm, like, oh, it's good. so far back. In- I've, got a, I've got a good story about the, the first episode of Daredevil when it came <laughs> out. Uh, so for some reason, uh, the, the screen on my television wasn't working properly. So only the audio was coming out of the television. And Daredevil is a blind superhero, right? And I was like, wow. <laughs> 
this entire first episode is in the black. This is crazy. <laughs> Risky. I thought it was like an actual thing that they decided to do. So I watched a majority of the episode thinking, oh, this is an interesting idea. That's hysterical. Although, honestly, have... once the uh, once the visual comes on, it's really, you know, it's still pretty dark a lot of the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually, I feel like the best job in show business is lighting director for Daredevil. Yeah. Just huh. like shine a couple flashlights and you're good. Like we don't really <laughs> need much. That's about right. True. Absolutely. Like, we that's want the this gravy as gravy train. As possible. We'll yeah. see. And again, this is more your show, but I, I sat there like watching this and I'm like, so is the whole show just watching this guy get the crap beat out of him? Because I'm not quite sure Almost. I'm getting the whole point of it. Like he just gets his no, that, face that, kicked that in every se- yep. every episode. Yep, that's yep. pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's supposed to be like inspiring in some way or he has a cool yes. outfit. He he's gets got, a, he gets a cool outfit by the end, but for the first part he he's looks, like the mask of Zorro. I have I have a hat that is the Daredevil hat and it's it's using the same kind of leather material. Um and it has the the D D on it, right? Um from far away uh, the suit or the the hat looks like one of those uh, cheap fireman's hat that you can get at like uh, firehouse subs and stuff like for, that for little kids. So so whenever I see him wearing the suit, I look far away and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's my hat! <laughs> he looks like he's wearing a little fireman suit. It's, it's so cute. <laughs> well, my, so what was hmm. the inspiration for the the short film? Going back to your actual film, not Ooh, the tick, there's, but tick. Okay, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of different inspiration for the short film. Um, one. The, I think the major one is trying to not portray um, the supernatural as a, a, as a mental illness um, and having the mental illness, like the internal issues, be the actual villain of a story um, because that's my own truth. Uh, and I find myself constantly fighting myself more than fighting other people. Um, and that's something that I kind of wanted to discuss. Uh as well as, you know, having brothers that don't get along and uh, f- finding some kind of way to be comfortable with each other in the end. And there's there's so much that's just me in that story that's, yeah. So if we're talking psychology, <laughs> is there something to the fact that um, Scotty got beaten up in this film and my brother's name is scotty, and his yeah. Name is scotty. yes yes oh. yeah no no that's not that's not an actual thing uh but happy accident we'll call it but i mean there there is that that sense of uh of problems within family uh and i'm i i won't lie there's like the the relationship between my me and my brother have has always been estranged uh estranged michael can attest to that it's it's never been a close relationship i I love my brother i don't get me wrong i think he's a a very interesting person but it's just like that's something that i deal with and i wanted to kind of explore that in my own truth well it is it is a myth you know just because we're born into families that we're gonna like the people that were you sort of i mean even objectively (laughs) like not that we don't love them but yeah that we that we sort of have the same interests or the same kinds of way of looking at the world i mean you know my parents are like fox news republicans i love them but i tell my dad he's a fascist every time i see him so it's like you know (laughs) i love you dad but you're a fascist you know (laughs) so sometimes that happens Yeah. yeah exactly I mean, it's interesting because there was really an amazing progression of the relationship between the brothers in that short film. I mean, there was just a lot of a lot emotion. of emotion. Yes. I mean, a lot of yeah. We would call it uh, affect. Yes. Thank Scotty and thank the the other lead Brian for that because that that's that's all them. That's not me. Um, they brought all of that to the 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 acting. So. It it turned out beautifully. <laughs> it really those, did. Those scenes, well, like, especially true. especially that last scene when I watch you guys like coming together and you holding him, and I'm like, I cry every single time on the couch. On the couch. That yeah, scene. Yeah, the script I, just I, said I, like he holds I, him on the couch. Yeah, that's all. I've... We filmed that. We did it in one take, and I was like, that's that's all we need. That's that's wow. it. Yeah, we did it a couple times. Just no, for no. Here's ladies. what happened. We did it in one take. You're like, that's it. That's perfect. Oh, my daredevil hat was on the couch. Now we have to move that and do the whole. <laughs> but shoot we still again. used it because it was the better take. Anyways, um, yeah. Mm. Well, I did. I I watched it actually 
Well, I had to watch it twice because the first time I watched it on my phone and then I started to listen to your, you know, postmortem about it. And you said something about special effects. And I'm like, what is he talking about? Oh. And so I had to stop your podcast, go watch it again because I couldn't see some of the things, some of the effects on the small little screen. And I'm like, oh, that's what he's talking about. So yeah. I sort of missed that the first time. But there were things I definitely saw the second time that I didn't see the first time. Cool. Um, like uh, – in the opening scene with with Scotty, where like he's having the beer and being all bummed about his ex wife, and uh-huh. uh, all the pills that were on the table, like you I didn't, didn't notice that. Notice that? I, not the first time. Oh. Not well. I maybe I noticed it, but I didn't make significance out of it until you sort of see the whole thing at the end, where he sort of has the same hallucination set. So then it becomes like aha, you know, aha. Yeah, I, I don't know what it says about me, but I noticed the pills right off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> and I did I did have some quite like I was like, OK, so are they trying to just like sort of portray, you know, sort of a classic kind of psychotic spectrum disorder, schizophrenic disorder? Are they playing with something like at a certain point I was like, maybe Maybe the brother's not real. Maybe the ex-wife's not real. Like, maybe everybody's dead already. Oh. I don't know. There's always those, yeah. like, twists, you know? So right. I was trying to figure out, like, exactly if I was getting it or if there was a twist so I, I wasn't asked, getting. I asked somebody else uh, while we were on the podcast with them about what – it was It was Seth. It was Seth, yeah. It was Seth about what they saw when they watched it. What, what was the film? Like, what was the – what was the ending? What actually happened in that short film? I want to hear from your guys' perspective what actually happened at the end. From me? No, not from you guys. You guys <laughs> from know. From the docs. You guys know. I've already talked to you guys. I'm talking about these uh, wonderful ladies on the other end of the, the country. It's interesting. I mean, like, did the Brett, and of course I'm not good with names, so I can't remember which one was the older brother. Scotty, yep. Scotty's the older brother. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of like, is he kind of joining the younger brother like you're kind of in this psychotic world and I've kind of bonded with you and so I'm gonna not necessarily be able to I can help you get to treatment but a piece of me like it's gonna drag me into the psychotic world as well that is so interesting. I love I love hearing these because that is that's not my uh, original intent for what I was trying to do with the story. But to hear somebody else's point of view that is that is just as true as what I was trying to portray originally. Well, I so I love I love hearing these. I can see the look on Doctor Angela's face that says she completely disagrees with me. I, my, <laughs> okay. I have to say, my first time through, if, if I was just gonna you know sort of just straight watch it and not try to go off into like crazy supernatural land, right. my straight interpretation of it was that the younger brother obviously had a serious psychotic illness and that the older brother when he sees that book he gets it like he that that everything that he experiences with the fake girlfriend and all that is sort of empathy and he sort of understands because he also has his own mental illness and his own struggles and so he kind of just gets it and when he brings the book he is kind of bringing her to him through that book because that's where kind of all of the younger brother's delusions and psychosis live and so it's kind of this bridge of I kind of I get you I love you and I want to help you but I also want to show you that I understand and that's kind of how he brings the book to her I mean to him okay yeah that is that is that's That's awesome awesome. (laughs) so so that is so close but yet so far away from the original concept of the idea so you're saying that that the character angela the the woman um who is living there is the manifestation of brian the manifestation of empathy yeah you will and uh, yeah that that she will know that he that she's the kind of she's in the book she's the crazy in the book right so she's the manifestation of all the crazy in the book and when he kind of sees the situation and sees the book he kind of gets it and when he says to her she's like is he going to be all right he's like yeah i think so because he kind of understands what's going on so i kind of see yeah that i'm bringing you the book i'm bringing you the thing that kind of gave you comfort um but it's kind of like a when he, she says, can you, can I go with you? It's the book that in bringing, that's how he brings her with him is through yes. that book. Yes. Well, one thing that's interesting though is um, 
Dr. Angela, you're talking about this in terms of the girlfriend being comforting. But in fact, like, they're actually kind of fighting. And I always think that's interesting because um, a lot of times when people are psychotic and the people, like, I've known people that have an imaginary girlfriend or boyfriend and um, it always makes me sad and sort of tells me something about the person right. when they're not getting along. Like I, right. I had one client who like used to travel, quote, travel through time. Um, and she had a boyfriend, quote, in the 1950s or uh, something wow. like that. And um, but they would fight. Uh huh. And it was like, well, that's sad. Huh. If you're like traveling all the way back through time and you found a boyfriend in the 1950s, like, can't they at least get along with you? Like, that's Put your yeah, differences yeah. aside for yeah, the sake exactly. of time travel. <laughs> exactly. But I think well, that's, and, that's and the s- conflict of being mentally ill, though, is that sure. if there's some residual insight that knows that, you know, this, that something is really wrong and you're struggling mm. with that, as, it's, it's a comfort and it's your, it's your torture at the same time. That what? that gets into like the Matrix and and things, those those types of stories where humans define themselves through suffering as well as mm-hmm. uh, pleasant things, and oh, and and that's why the 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 original Matrix didn't stick is because it was a paradise, it was perfection, and it was too perfect for anyone to be able to handle it. Right. So I yeah, because because that is an interesting question. Why would you invent? Um, a 1950s boyfriend for yourself that doesn't treat you well. That's right. fascinating. Mm. Right. That actually, spoiler alert, was similar to something that happened. Oh, spoiler to you, Dr. Angela. I'm just going to say it's similar to something that happened in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Where spoiler s- alert. I'm going to take my headphones off. You guys talk. <laughs> well, yeah, I, no, I have to too because I'm like behind a season. I'll just yeah, say, whole, I'll just say somebody mind. creates a world and I can hear, I can still the hear first it. try is the too perfect. I'm, I'm going to listen. You're going to spoil it for me. I don't care. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> it's it's fine. Just spoil it. Go ahead. No, I I'm can't because Dr. Angel is sitting here. Okay. Oh, she hasn't watched either. No. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm a season behind on oh, that. Yeah, so yeah. I haven't yeah. seen season four yet. We so. we all are. I think Scotty's a season behind. I'm about a season and a half behind. How many how many seasons are there? Four-ish? Then I'm four-ish season I am behind. Four behind. <laughs> the last, yeah. I was going to say, the last one I saw had like a Ghost Rider or something. I saw the beginning of the Ghost Rider part, yeah. and then I stopped at Ghost Rider. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> let's go back to your conversation. Let's yeah, not talk about television. No, we were, we well, were talking about what y- your intentions were for the tick. Oh, excuse yeah, me. So tick, 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 tick. Let's, let's, let's talk about that whole relationship itself. Um, uh, spoiler alert, uh, she is the manifestation of the book. She isn't um, a manifestation of um, Brian's unhappiness. Uh, it's, it's really hard to see a lot of the times, but in the... Uh, in the book itself and the writing on the wall at the end, there's a mm-hmm. lot of like runes at the end of the short film. Uh, and those are uh, like the, the Norse mythology uh, rune poem runes. And they mean like health and family and God and other other things that kind of mean more happiness is, is kind of where I was going for. So this, this character, Angela, right, is a, a manifestation and has the ability to make things good like in somebody's brain is like what i was thinking Hmm. so and brian being somebody with schizophrenia yes she's helping him by doing this but is she really because he's still trashing his room he's still trashing his life so the character of angela and you can watch if you watch it again you can see her trying to get her to call her brother so that she can actually try to get her or get Brian help or the character of Rick some help. So she's consistently trying to help him, trying to say, Hey, you've got schizophrenia. I can only help you so much. That's where that's kind of coming from. So that's kind of cool. So she was like a, like a ghost or something, a ghost of the book. Yeah. I would say like in how I picture it kind of, uh, uh, some kind of supernatural being that's attached to the book. And I mean, her name is Angela. So and like that was Angel. that was not a mistake. Yeah, maybe she's like Tom Riddle, but good. Ooh, See? good Tom oh. Riddle. Oh yes. my god, that's, that's a good band name. I had guys. not <laughs> good Tom Riddle. Good Tom Riddle. <laughs> I uh, I like to down. think I like to think of the, of the film uh, as an art piece in so much as it's out of your hands now. Yeah, it, it's out there, and you can say. 
that she's uh, a Norse supernatural power attached to the book, a good Tom Riddle, if you will. But I think that everyone's interpretation of it that I've heard so far from from you two and from other friends, almost everybody looks at it differently. I don't necessarily think that it means that they're projecting their own selves into what they see. I think just sometimes you just see different things. It's it's very interesting to see that stuff. Yeah. Um, Yeah. where people are allowed to interpret it. It's just like looking at a painting. You can yeah. see, oh, I'm going to focus on this part of it or that part of it. And it doesn't, doesn't necessarily say anything about you, but it just, it just helps it be more living art. I oh, think. yeah. I, it's kind of neat. Yeah, I agree. Like Rabbit in a Snowstorm, because you've seen that now. Well, it is interesting because as a psychologist watching it, um, I, I did think that there was something supernatural about it because uh, typically, so the voices and all of that that you played, like that's a very typical symptom with um, schizophrenia. Right. Actually, um, visual hallucinations are not as typical. Um, right. and, and so having those be part of uh, what Rick's perceiving and, and especially the kinds, you know, of, uh, you know, they're, they're very kind of demonic in some ways right. um, was interesting um, and did pull in something a little different because, again, most – most people, I think, on this, who experience psychosis, it's generally um, auditory hallucinations. Yeah, and that's that's kind of where I I when I was doing research on the project and on schizophrenia itself, because it is it is schizophrenia. Um, the whole original idea for the project was to do like a set of movies based on um, like the day in the life of somebody with some sort of mental illness and kind of like follow them. Because I have a I have a close friend and everybody here at this table knows him, uh, Keaton Moyers. I know th- the three of us know Keaton. Uh, he's you don't know Keaton. Uh, he has um, <laughs> no. severe Tourette's and uh, OCD, and he just we we just wanted to shine a light on kind of the actual positive and negative things and try to change that idea of mental illness for what media says that it is a lot of the times but on the other hand i did need to make it because movies are a visual thing i did need to make it visually so the way that i handled the visual hallucinations was make them very very light um when i first changed things i made it um very dramatic like um scotty so uh the older brother his face at the end kind of like uh, when I first did it, it was like this really like super scary demon face. Um, and I was like, that's not what somebody like this would see. It's not hallucinations aren't necessarily like that. So the hallucinations are really, really small, very slight because most people don't see hallucinations when they have schizophrenia. And that's just kind of where it, I wanted to take it. It did look like they kind of grew. Like they started like first it was my face and then like it started to get more and more and more distorted and then just before it got super creepy it's like it cut to the next shot right. or something. Yep. So you could literally almost miss it. You could miss it. Yeah. And there was that auditory hallucination and there was a phone call. Right. Yeah. Uh there were no auditory hallucination phone calls. Well Angela. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, see, and that, even when we were filming it, that's when I was like, wait a minute, I'm still confused. (laughs) Is she, (laughs) is she a hallucination? How could she be calling me? We wanted you to be method for that part, right? (laughs) So (laughs) the way that it was originally intended, uh, the, the Scotty getting up, that was not a hallucination on the cell phone. But if you see it as a hallucination, that's, you see it as a hallucination. That's, that's, that's just as right as what I originally intended. Wait, so. so who called him? It was Angela. She, because she's a spirit. She's a yeah, yes. not demon. She's, she's a good supernatural. I, yeah, she, I I would say I would say demon. I would say like one of the one of the things that I was when I was originally when I rewrote the script uh, was that I played with the idea not all demons are bad. The internal demons are internal demons are bad. External demons can be good. So you can get you can get cell phone coverage in hell apparently. Yeah, oh my god what that's was so that 1421 awesome. was that, that only oh, yeah. only with t-mobile though <laughs> yeah, only t-mobile <laughs> this this episode hopefully brought to you by t-mobile <laughs> <You're right. laughs> all right so we well we designed a little bit of a psychological quiz specifically okay. for you guys like we custom custom tailored mm. it to you okay okay Ooh. so we could just do like rapid fire and you could just let us know and uh cool. we can ask you these questions how about that sounds like a plan okay. excellent okay Number one, Marvel or DC? Marvel. Uh, Marvel movies, DC comics. This is Scotty, Marvel. 
This is Michael, and I am very torn at the moment. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joel, and this I don't Joel. care. I'm also torn because I don't have a preference. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I changed my answer. He doesn't like superheroes at all, so. That's not true. Uh, okay. It's not true. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to change my answer now, too. Uh, I think DC does a great job with visuals, and I'm more of a visual kind of a guy. Uh, the movies are great visually, DC, but the... the Marvel Comics. No, no, I'm going to say Marvel Comics, and uh, I don't know, guys. What am I supposed to That's say? A good I, I changed my answer, too. I'm going to say that DC has much better intellectual property, but Marvel is managed way better. Okay, wait That's a minute. So say. we have Charles back and forth. We have yeah. who's back and forth again? I Scotty is kind of on... I like I like like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Those are amazing, but it's just taken too long. They're playing catch up. They're going to be playing catch up for twenty years. Oh yeah, at this point. Oh, so oh sorry. It's like, I'm not supposed to. Agree. And who is the yeah. one? And who and who who doesn't like the superheroes? It's not that I don't like them. I just don't watch the movies. This is Joel. Oh. I was I was giving him a hard time. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Joel, you're going to love the next question. Okay. What superhero would you be? Oh, uh, Batman. <laughs> Why? Uh, um, he has a butler, <laughs> <laughs> and he has a cave. Those are the reasons, and he's always wanted to be Tom Hanks. It's it's not the it's not the the shark repellents or the bat copter or anything like no, that. No, no, no. It's the butler. He wants in the a cave. cave. He wants a cave with tea delivered. <laughs> I'm writing this down. <laughs> um. Anybody else uh, superheroes? Um. If if I had to choose one of the major ones, um, I I definitely relate the most to Captain America. Who's ah. that? Who's that? Uh, this is Michael. Sorry. Okay. Interesting. Th- this is very uh, just interesting just already. being being homeschooled and and raised in a in a very traditional way, um, and and seeing seeing his character and how how he tries to adjust to the twenty first century. Um, after, after being capsicle, the, uh, capsicle, capsicle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Capsicle. Uh, this is Scotty. Um, usually the question I get along these lines is what superpower would you like to have? And I always say telekinesis, but I can't imagine any char- superhero characters like that. You would like to be Jean Grey. Maybe Jean Grey. Ooh, That's a good one. That's actually a Phoenix. solid choice. What about Magneto? Is kind of like that. Oh, Magneto would be a good one too. See, but, but only then metal. But then, yeah. if I'm if I'm also thinking about like all the other aspects of it, I mean, like Iron Man is. There's some desirable parts of that, you know, millionaire, right. ph- philanthropist. Oh yeah, and yeah, um, he's he's essentially Batman, just with a lot more technical know-how. I think what it comes down to is that I'm lazy enough where I would, I would definitely use the telekinesis to bring the remote to my hand. Oh yeah. Um, and then if I were Iron Man, I could also just like fly around and not have to like see, that's get why, in the car I, get a, or that's like why that. I have a butler. So there you go. <laughs> it's, it's essentially the same. Best of both worlds. So Joel right. wants a live butner, butler, not a mechanical Jarvis. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say that, but what's funny is I, I usually end up doing a lot of the housework, so I'd probably be helping Alfred. Like He is the Alfred. <laughs> that's the, that's his, his <laughs> he wants to be. He wants yeah. to be Alfred. Yeah. Alfred, what can I do? Can I cut something? I wonder. I wonder if there's... He doesn't want any of the action. He just wants to stay at home and make the tea. <laughs> I wonder if there's any comic books where Alfred actually was a superhero. I wonder if well, that would be... Well, in the animated series, he, he had a very intense military background okay. and he he got himself out of some scrapes without batman's help interesting um so i'm pretty sure there are comics about that as well cool hmm. okay for me i would say the most relatable superhero would probably be spider-man because uh, when i was a kid kind of treated pretty poorly by fellow students in school so that was the one that was like, oh, it's this nerdy kid who also has superpower and he also is this, but he's also super nerdy. That's 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 kind of me. So Except the, without the superpowers. So just getting beat up. <laughs> Kids threw a lot of spiders at you? He yes. got bit by a spider. Yeah. It was not radioactive. No. So. It was All a wolf right. spider. <laughs> All right. So which <laughs> Harry Potter house... Oh, I have the answer. Ooh, I got. Oh wait, no, I don't. <laughs> I ha- I okay. So th- so th- okay. So this is Charles. I have up until about two years ago, 
I considered myself a staunch Hufflepuff, but now lately I've been uh, considering myself more of a Slytherin. Wow. Yeah. Nobody says Slytherin. Actually, oh, I true. there are and more people, people in Colorado that say Slytherin than anybody. Yeah. People, but people it's who are weed. Slytherin that I know will not admit it. I admit it. I'm. I think. I think now looking at like the drive and stuff like that because Slytherin. Okay, first off, Slytherin, you're not evil. Let's let's put that out there. Not necessarily. Evil people have come yeah. from Slytherin. I'm sure evil people have come out of Hufflepuff and False. Gryffindor. False. Yeah. No, that's not that's not true. <laughs> Just but it's, 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 that, come out it's of that drive and strive for a greatness that that I relate to the most. You get, you guys will have to answer for me because I don't know. You're definitely uh, either a Hufflepuff or a Ravenclaw. Okay. I, would, I would I would see him as Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw I, I don't yeah. know. You you're really good at the cleaning and the art stuff. I would say I'd say Hufflepuff. Yeah, I'd say Hufflepuff. Okay. Is that Joel or Scotty? This is Joel. Joel, yeah, Joel is Hufflepuff. We're telling we're telling Joel we're we're all acting as the Sorting Hat. <laughs> I right. only saw I only saw the first Hufflepuff. Movie, so. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's so so stuff. far Joel is um, Alfred, who's in Hufflepuff. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Pretty much. Uh, this is Scotty. Uh, I will be the first to point out um, that uh, none of us would be in Hogwarts because we're American. So we would have gone to oh, Ilver Morning. Sh- oh my gosh, that was so, not the right. Question, so Scotty. I believe okay. that qualifies me as a Ravenclaw. No, okay. So first and, off, okay. So if we're if we're going on, on no, uh, no, 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 on American schools, I'm definitely a Thunderbird or whatever the. The Thunderhawk or whatever. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it's uh, Zapdos. Yeah, yeah, I don't, the, I don't, I don't remember that. As, as, uh, as quick as I was to point that out, I don't remember hardly any of the houses in Illinois. Right. Morning. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, whenever I take the test, I'm usually halfway, like right between um, uh, Ravenclaw and... Uh, what's the other one? Gryffindor? Gryffindor. <laughs> Gryffindor. But honestly, I think that, <laughs> I think that at, at its core, I'm the Ravenclaw kid who uh, tries to make jokes all the time. Yeah. That's me. Okay. I, yeah, this is, this is Michael. Um, I, I would say um, like a few years ago, I would be a hundred percent Gryffindor. Now I feel that I'm kind of between Gryffindor and Hufflepuff. So I, I mostly identify as a Grifflepuff. Uh, you can't do and that. I well, okay, fine. Okay, then so so choose, so I'm the sorting hat. So so you you choose your Gryffindor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I was gonna say we haven't been talking that long, and I've already put you in Gryffindor. I had already written it down. <laughs> it's <laughs> you're 100 percent a Gryffindor. Yeah. Well, you well, said thanks. you said Captain America. America. Yeah, Captain America. So that, that right Shay. there, you're you're Gryffindor. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. The same thing with Alfred. It's like if you it's if you're gonna be Al- yeah, it's Hufflepuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, wow, they're 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 they got us pegged. Hey, uh, just a fun question for our just a just a mind thought for all of our viewers. Uh, why wasn't Hermione a Ravenclaw? Yeah, what? Yeah. Something to think about. It was it was about. mentioned in the book that the Sorting Hat thought about putting her in Ravenclaw, like they did with Harry and Slytherin. Exactly, yeah. and and then it changed its mind at the last second, probably because of the ability to help Harry. I mean, like, it. I, I think the Sorting Hat probably had a little bit more foresight than anyone knew if i can though point of order and this might be the most ravenclaw thing ever but i mean like uh can't they just be friends with people in other houses it's not yeah. like she wasn't allowed to still hang out with them and go on all those it's not like they had no, to get permission but... to go down to the basement well and i mean harry house. did oh, date cho chang and i mean that's like right and and a lot of their plots oh, she in a different house yeah oh shit. a lot of the things they came was up she? with wait yeah was cho chang yeah. In house? Cho chang was ravenclaw yeah, yeah yeah as was luna lovegood yeah she was yeah I thought Luna was in Hufflepuff. No, I no I she was Ravenclaw because she she helped Harry get into the Ravenclaw comedy. Oh, that's right. Oh. That's right. That's but right. here's here's really the here's really the true thing is that Hermione's actually the hero in in the entire series. Yeah, I completely agree. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Thanks and even... for ruining it for me. <laughs> <laughs> so so we talk about this uh, every once in a while, Michael and I. But Harry Potter is not the star of the show. He's he not. should not be at all. And like he is one of the. The most annoying characters of the entire book. Oh or come books. on, his cousin's even worse. No, than Ron that. is no. way more annoying. No, Dudley, no, Dudley is Ron is, is great. And, and Harry is no, you're such a about, whiny little boy. He's talking about Dudley. The entire well, thing should be rewritten with Hermione okay. as as the the star because um, she really I, is the one that like fixed everything. Fixed, you know, she's the one that made the whole thing happen. 
You know what crap is going to rain down when they make that movie? Well, I don't care, but she, she, it's, 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 I hate to say it, but you know, it's that whole thing of the, 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 you know, protagonist chosen one, you know, we tend to lean male in our culture, mm. uh, but I, I disagree vehemently. No, we, we, I can't see, argue. We, these, these four white guys on the other side of the, the country agree with you 100%. <laughs> yeah, we do. Absolutely. We're all nodding along. See, now here's, here's an idea that I've had for a long time and I don't know how, Right now it sounds impossible, but I think like in 10 years with just little couple tweaks on a DVR or something like that, I think it could happen where like, what, like, you know how you can plop, pop in a couple CDs in your car if you still have a six CD change or something like that and make your own like little playlist of track five from this, track four from this, track 10 from that CD and you listen to your little playlist or Mm -hmm. put all your songs in your iPod or whatever. Like I would love to be able to just pop in, like to pull up Harry Potter and be like, I want to watch all the Hermione scenes in order. So you can basically watch the movie already from her perspective. I want to watch all of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings just from Legolas's point of view to see what his whole arc was. It's possible. With these, like, nine-hour, six-hour, you know, content of stories, it's not impossible to do that. You could sit down and knock that out in, like, two and a half hours. You'd be, like, basically just watch the Hermione movies That's yeah they did that with uh, uh owen wilson and all his movies where he says wow <laughs> <laughs> wow and then wow. they did it in reverse uh, owen, wow. owen wilson has wow. an amazing range wow. i mean really an ama- wow. amazing range as an actor yeah yeah absolutely we just we, we not, love joking about not it not great good. range as a singer are we talking about emma watson no oh, we're talking no about- you oh, okay. you stop that okay okay <laughs> You, Mr. Musical Theater, Mr. Negative Nancy over here, <laughs> you stop that nonsense. No, but oh, we're not on our okay. podcast. We're not on our podcast. Okay. You be as negative as you want excellent, to be. Excellent, excellent. No. <laughs> okay, Sorry, so were you, were we have you two more questions. Two more questions. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Uh, second and last question. What reality show are you going to be on? <laughs> You're going to oh, have to oh, be on yeah. one, so pick one. What reality Jill, show? Jill, go first. Well, we all know which show, show is mine. <laughs> Dance Moms. <laughs> Dance Doctors, moms. have you been, you've been listening to our show? Yes. You know the show I talk about? What is it? Time? Dance something moms? Dance Moms. Dance would be Moms. It. Oh, my <laughs> but God. Are you I'll a mom? Up, uh, yeah. No, I'll show up on the red carpet of the dance competition sometime. <laughs> I'll oh, be there. Okay. Am all I right. allowed to admit to watching that show? Yeah, no, you have a, you have a fellow yeah. watcher on, on the I, other I side. actually, oh. I can't watch it regularly because the level of personality disorder on that show is just really disturbing to me but in sh- that's like- why i like it <laughs> it stresses me out too you guys like a lot see we started we started our dance moms watch bits on our podcast because it was just funny and now we're all actually really intrigued by what's actually going on in dance moms it's so interesting to see how crazy these people are like going mm. back in time don't you feel like uh, Chloe got the short end of the stick. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I've never seen this show. <laughs> oh my god, it's all about Maddie Ziegler. Maddie Ziegler. Blah blah. Chloe, blah. I know. Well, Chloe never got the opportunities that Maddie did. She didn't. She's doing pretty well, okay, for herself, but yes. Uh, right, other Michael. other reality shows that everybody's going to be on. Michael, uh, do I have to go right now? Oh, oh. <laughs> Scotty, do you have one? I don't have. I'm trying to. I have it. nothing. Um, you guys don't watch any anything. I don't watch reality television very much. Oh, okay. I guess I got one. The uh, tell how the tables have turned. <laughs> 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 um, I know that um, uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon had a show called Greenlit. Yep, that's probably um, where yeah. I would be. Where they would uh, they they would bring they had the competition. To, for like a, for screenwriters for directors for I think they might have just been those two just screenwriters mm-hmm. and directors and they would pick a, the best script and pick the best director and bring him into Hollywood and l- watch you know, watch him make a movie yeah. and it's oftentimes it didn't work out that great yeah we um, talked about that in our earlier episodes before you guys showed up we talked yeah. about their TV show the the green light television yeah and so I, I think it'd be I think it'd be pretty good although technically it means I'd have to win to get on there not necessarily just be a personality but, right um, I would say green light is a is a is a good one for me I would also say like the the worst chefs in America, whatever whatever that would be. Oh, worst cooks. Pro- yeah, worst cooks. I would so be on that show in <laughs> two seconds. What's what's your what's your best dish? Uh, my best dish. What's the best dish that I make? I make um, a great uh, uh chicken jerk, uh, with like pineapple and black beans and rice, and it's delicious because it's all just the store bought ingredients. Isn't it, <laughs> isn't it jerk chicken? Chicken jerk. 
<laughs> jerk chicken. I, I've heard it as jerk chicken. I think maybe you've been having a hard time working with a dish, and you're like, chicken jerk. jerk. You just jerk. You're just such a jerk. Oh, my gosh. Um, but that's that's mine. So, um, wait, can I just say something about Worst Cooks? Because I, I watch this show as well. Right. Um, does anybody remember the guy that came on, and he had to make his signature dish? And his signature dish was to make... Um, fish in the dishwasher and then he freaked out because <laughs> the set did not have a dishwasher so he couldn't figure out how to cook his fish anybody remember this <laughs> no that sounds wonderful <laughs> that's interesting so do though, you use to, like, cascade steam, or like finish for fish that? Using like, your I think he chose oh, yeah. not to use soap oh, I, God. I don't think that was ing- I mean, but he's literally like running around the set going where's the dishwasher <laughs> I, I can't think, make my I think, fish uh, I think Don gives like the best texture to the to, to the fish. Oh, well, I'm sure. Anything yeah. with lemon, really. Oh, there yeah, you exactly. go. You get that lemon flavor to it. Yeah. But the powder, oh you can use the powder as. Like oh, it's a rub. like a rub. Yeah. Oh man. The powder and gross. And then you I've put one of the one houses. of the dissolving capsules in there. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> For a flavor bomb. <laughs> um, <laughs> and this this is Michael. I um I gave it some thought, and honestly, as as scary as it would be. I think I would have to be on uh, Naked and Afraid. <laughs> oh wow! wow. Yeah, where see, you... he's he's naked right now, so it's, it's perfect. <laughs> and I'm and not afraid. He's not afraid. <laughs> but he's we are. Afraid. Yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> it's a good thing I asked about that video thing afraid. first. <laughs> wow um, so captain america is going to be on naked and afraid now i'm confused i had him all diagnostically figured out now it's like well, he just threw me for a loop i know it's like those people on their way out the door from therapy that are like by the way i killed somebody boom <laughs> <laughs> see you next week see you next week all right I, I last take question pride in being unpredictable imagine that you are in hell okay what movie or TV show is playing on continuous loop? <laughs> Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. <laughs> Big Bang Theory. <laughs> oh, I like that show. Oh, it's the worst. Uh, oh, man. What show? It can be a movie or a TV show? Yep. But it's okay. on continuous loop. Continuous loop. Oh, man. Oh, I know. Uh, that movie that I hate. <laughs> the, wow, great yeah, one! What, yeah, so descriptive. So uh, the one with the with the, the magic crab that just gets pulled by it's like a plastic. We just crab talked about this the thing. other week. With no, Sarah was it Michelle last Geller week? And yeah. And is it, it simply it, irresistible? Is yeah, that what yeah. it is? Yep, yep. Oh, I couldn't. I couldn't even watch 15 minutes of that movie. And if I were forced to watch all of it over and over and over again, that would be it. Yep, Michael. What the health minus the last 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. It's so bad. Absolutely. Have you guys have have you guys watched What the Health the the wonderful health documentary on Netflix? No, but I did hear you guys talk about it and it sounded just delightful. Okay, cuz uh, we've got a we've got a movie for you when we win our uh, 6 degrees of separation for you. Oh, I don't oh. know if, I don't know if you're going to cuz we added a little Ooh. twist. So Okay. Oh. But anyway, Ooh. um anyone oh. else? Joel. Oh man. You know, I'm going to have to go with Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Oh, that's it's a good one. pretty bad, yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I, yeah. Yeah. That's my answer. We have, like, nothing I, I, to do say I really to that. Need to exp- do I need to explain? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so did Scotty pick um the... Scotty big, picked Simply Irresistible, big, okay. although it's it, Charles picked... Uh, uh, big Bang Theory. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. About myself. Oh, I yeah. swear, I, it, this is why I need video. I can't. You, you all sound kind of the same. I know. Okay, big Bang. Uh, and we'll start doing voices. All right, everybody, do their best impression. Joel, from here on out, you're doing Tom Hanks. I'm doing Kermit the Frog. Michael, you're <laughs> oh doing uh, H. H. John H. Benjamin. Benjamin. Yeah. Scotty, you're doing uh, uh, Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, this was a great time. Thank you so much for having us, guys. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so what um, mental illnesses may we have? <laughs> yeah, Lana. I mean. <laughs> Oh my lord! That's okay. Horrible. Well, do you want to we'll just take? We'll each, we'll each take one. Okay. So, um, right. Charles, I, I mean, you, I yes, don't think ma'am. you qualify as having a, a mental disorder per se, uh, okay. but but clearly you are the kind of individual that has um, uh, uh, the need to uh, be in control and to direct things, and uh, that you also have an, uh, a lot of empathy uh, for your fellow okay. man. And so you have both leadership and insight. 
Well, you're half right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Key. Who's next? Michael. Okay. Michael, you have a severe case of earnestness. <laughs> Um, I'm, I don't know if it's treatable, in fact. Um, yeah, really. Sorry, bud. Earnestness and perhaps even uh, honesty. Yeah, that's, that's disturbing. Bummer. (laughs) Um, Joel, I think you missed your calling as a caterer. Um, I think there's a oh deep, gosh. deep need inside of you to um, to serve people uh, hot, warm beverages and um, to sit in a cave and watch really, really horrible TV shows. So, so if if this were the cast of Friends, you'd be Monica. <laughs> Angela, I actually went Freudian with the cave thing. Okay, you know, cave. Ooh. Do I need oh, right. to describe that further? Ooh, Think- Joel wants to be in the cave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. He wants to be in the cave. Mm, oh, my God. Yeah, that's that's where I went with that. Okay, and Scotty, go ahead. Um, huh. just, I think Scotty, we hear a, I think we hear a zipper. Too, okay, can we, can we first? He's too smart for his own good. Yeah. He, he's, he's too smart for his own good. And a little bit oh. controlling. <laughs> yeah. It's true. I didn't get that. I got I got that he's 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 probably the person in the room who like is smarter than a lot of the other people and he might be secretly judging them. And he could be dangerous. Uh, oh, dangerous. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I mean, Ooh. like if he gets that telekinesis, I mean, if you like think about this, this came up on Babylon 5 once. Like if you can control blood vessels, like you can do telekinesis at a very very fine level, you could kill people in a completely undetectable way just like That's telekinesis <laughs> your way into shutting off the blood vessel to their brain and boom they're done are you wow. suggesting that Scotty's a psychopath is that what you're saying I'm well, just saying we, all, we all wonder that pretty much on the daily so <laughs> well Fun. and again these are just these are just you know Provin- you know, uh, provisional diagnoses, you know, we, we haven't, like, written our formal reports yet. We haven't done the full battery. I yes. mean, we didn't ask you about which doctor on Doctor Who. We ran out of time. Yeah, for exactly. Oh. <laughs> exactly. So do we have Fun. any other questions for our, our lovely guests? Um, I don't know. They did a we, I know you did a really a good job. Of, I would have. I, I do have one, and it's kind of a downer question, so I'm sorry about that, and it's kind of serious. But since you guys are a podcast that deals really with, you know, the media and Hollywood, I'm I'm wondering if you have all talked about or thought about uh, kind of what's been going on in the last week or so with the uh, Hollywood situation and Harvey Weinstein. Yes. Yeah, we have mm. discussed it. So, so Michael and I, um, we've talked about how this affects our own personal business, and we won't go into details about that. But it's it's one of those situations where, um, I feel we're all on the same page, where we're all kind of deeply disgusted by um, the Hollywood elite doing this kind of stuff. And my recommendation is for people to not put their money towards Hollywood, and that sounds kind of crazy. But it's these people, and you can see it with Kate Winslet's most recent post, this is not going to change. And to be 100% serious, the only way that this kind of a situation is going to change is with money. And if you're, you know, not spending money on big name franchises and uh, big name anything, and you focus on the little guys, and I'm not trying to say... You listen to the Something Random podcast every Wednesday, um, <laughs> but I. Uh, but if you're focusing on helping like low, you know, indie projects and you know watch that kind of media, that'll help the situation. I feel in a certain way. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to help. It's it's so it's it's such a huge mess that it's just impossible at this point. Most and mostly, I I just truly hope that people can become okay with stepping forward about this stuff yes uh sooner and and not to allow the but they do the corporate side the the job aspects to um to affect those decisions you know it's um look at look at all these people who have come forward 
with with accusations like uh, Patricia Arquette or Dave Chappelle or uh, Seth MacFarlane made a joke like five years ago about Harvey mm. Weinstein. Um, and everybody called them out saying, like, this is ridiculous. How how dare you say this stuff? People are coming out. And because people are coming out and people are getting upset, it's it's not it's not a good situation for anybody. All I could say is look at your own self and look at your your own close knit group. And if there's somebody who's doing this kind of shit, call them out. Um, well, and the same thing happened with Bill Cosby. Nobody, they said nobody was saying anything, and people have been saying it for but years. People had been saying everything. Then one comedian makes a joke, and then it becomes a scandal. You know, it's been going on for long enough. Why aren't we listening? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So right. it's yeah. yeah. So so a combination then of of people speaking up and everyone else listening and yeah. believing. Yeah. And, yeah. And helping. Well, I think you, and, you guys, ha- like, as men, have a positive role to play because you're right here, right now, saying, hey, this is not part of the bro code. This is not okay. We don't think it's okay. Yeah. No, it's – it's as – think about, like – and talking to human beings the way that they are talking to human beings is just unfortunate, and I just don't know how – I don't know how I can help Hollywood – because I know that there's an issue, except for not giving them my money. And as of right now, I'm kind of like leaning towards that as my way of not doing that, to not go see movies anymore <laughs> and give them my money. So I think that's where I'm that's where I'm going with it. Hmm. Well, I because think... it's not it's not a, just a Harvey Weinstein problem. Let's be real here. There's there's many, 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 many. Oh my more god! People. You go mm-hmm. back to the 20s and 30s, or the one of the most famous was Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock and Tippi Hedren and the Birds in 1963. He basically treated her like you know he was just obsessed with her. Yeah, and um, that's one of the most famous ones. But yeah, I mean, this isn't a, like like we said, it's not new. And so, mm. well, it's also not necessarily just you know in Hollywood. I mean, it's any place oh, where yeah. you know mm-hmm. men have power and influence and. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the voices of women are not often uh, recognized. You know, right. they're not often heard. So I think it is important. And and obviously, if we vote with our, you know, if we vote with our wallets. That makes a difference. But yeah. it's something that I think we have to address in every industry. Unfortunately, uh, has Absolutely. the has the the Me Too uh, Facebook posts reached you guys yet on Facebook? Yep. Yep. Because um, it's it's on our end seeing how many people have been hit not i mean like have been sexually harassed um men and women are um coming forward is um just so disheartening and kind of hard to see uh on my end to be completely real about everything um cuz i mean i've been sexually harassed and i think you know everybody here has probably been sexually harassed at some point even if they're not necessarily willing to admit it, feeling uncomfortable with a sexual advance by somebody. I, I think, you know, Michael can attest to that for sure um, with certain people. Uh, I said but, I was sorry, Michael. <laughs> it's, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's hit everybody. And this is a, a serious issue in society and it's not a media problem. It's, it's not a, it's not a liberal problem as a lot of people are putting this as it's a, it's a human race problem and it's consistently you know affecting everybody and i i just want to know what i can do to fix it so i i think the um part of it that that i that I'm glad about is that it's opening the dialogue for this kind of stuff it's opening the conversation it, it's taking the lid off of a box that people never talked about Mm. never never talked about or like like even as families like i could talk with my mom about this now which wouldn't normally have been a thing right even Very a true. month ago yeah right and so um so just like when uh when robin williams killed himself and and everyone was being like you know what it's okay to talk about depression it's okay to talk about suicidal thoughts and to, and to talk to your friends and to let them know how you're feeling and, and it just kind of took the lid off of this thing so that suddenly as 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 a I want to say as a planet, but we're all very disjointed right now, but just as a humanity for us to be like, let's talk about what's okay and what's not okay and not sweep stuff under the rug anymore. And hopefully this will be a change that stays and we can move forward from it and not something that gets lost like like gun control or something else political. But you know what I mean? 
And Docs, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I feel like sex is already hard enough to talk about <laughs> when it's a sexual, uh, you know, assault or harassment or whatever. That's even more awkward. So I think, uh, you know, that may contribute to the part of oh, people being silent. Definitely, because people also fe- people feel a lot of shame about it. Yeah. Mm. Like, oh, if it happened to me, I must have done something to bring it on. Right. right. Yeah. Because that, in a way that makes people feel a little more in control. But the reality is, in most situations, they weren't. Yeah. Mm. Thank you for listening to Chasing the Mind. Today's episode featured music from purpleplanet.com. Please visit our website at chasingthemind.com where you can find links to the Something Random podcast and you can listen to past episodes and read about upcoming guests and events. And you can find our link to our Patreon page. Chasing the Mind is intended to provide information and entertainment and is not intended to substitute for professional mental health assessment or treatment. The opinions expressed by the doctors and the guests are their own and do not reflect professional advice. Information offered by the doctors does not create a therapist-client relationship. Please seek professional help with a mental health treatment provider if needed.